What's up everybody, Prozzy here. I am back. I know I haven't done a little moto vlog in a while, but I figured I'd do one just because, uh, you know, a typhoon ripped through this area the like, past couple days. And, uh, you know, because I'm leaving, I'm probably going to have to sell some of these bikes to make some money because I'm also poor. And I wanted to get in as much riding, as much videos as I can. So, uh, yeah, not Kevin though. I'm not selling Kevin. I don't know if I have the, the heart to sell that beautiful little bastard. So anyways, <clears throat> today I wanted to talk about five things I think on this when I'm leaving China. Now obviously I haven't left yet, that'll take a few months, and then maybe later I'll do a follow-up video about things I actually ended up missing about China. Holy good god, it is windy and I'm worried my GoPro is going to fall off because it's hanging on by a thread. So anyways, number five uh, on my list of things I'll miss when I leave China is convenient. Um, and I've talked about this before in other videos, but China is an incredibly convenient place to live. That means like I can like, just take the elevator downstairs and immediately there's restaurants with all different kinds of food. There's a Walmart and other supermarkets like right outside my apartment. So I can just go and, and, and get whatever I want. I don't have to go anywhere. It's really awesome and convenient. And I understand like a lot of people might say, well, you know, if you live in a big city in the West, like obviously I can do that too. Well, I know, but I mean, I feel like at least in Canada anyways, like I lived in Ottawa in the suburbs where, you know, things are more spread out. If you don't have a car, it's really difficult to go get groceries and things like that. It's actually got to take the bus, uh, which is not that convenient. But, you know, I guess if I lived downtown Ottawa, maybe it would be better. But uh, it seems like no matter where you live in China, there's just you're always going to have what you need within, you know, a, a reasonable reach. You don't have to have a car or your own personal mode of transportation here for, for making life really easy. Number four on my list is the natural beauty uh, slash freedom slash accessibility things are here. So China is a huge place and uh, it's also really beautiful. Obviously not all of it. <laughs> I've definitely lived and been to places that are ugly and, uh, you know, are not that great. But for the most part, especially where I live here in Guangdong, it's really, really pretty. And the fact that I'm fortunate enough to have a motorcycle to go out and explore with is huge. Um, that's why I always encourage people to uh, go out and ride and, and explore when you can, because it's, it's just so much better on a bike to, to be able to go out and see the uh, countryside and all the different mountains that are here in Guangdong province. Um, and, you know, or if you live up in the north, like uh, Neymongu, uh, I mean, Inner Mongolia, you've got loads of, uh, you know, just plains. I don't know how to say that, like grasslands that you can go ride over and stuff. And uh, if you want to know more about that, well, you can wait for Conquering Northern China to come out because I know uh, the guys went up there and uh, did a bunch of riding up there. But all over China has something to offer for you, uh, especially if you have a bike. And it's just, it's such a really pretty place. Not to say that, you know, where I come from, Canada, isn't pretty. Uh, I'm just not used to this kind of sort of area, I guess, if that makes any sense. So it's got, it's got a lot different, a lot more different things than Canada does. You know, I, I, we don't have jungles near Ottawa or giant, giant mountains. Uh, and I really like that about this place and I'm probably gonna miss it. Number three on my list of things I will probably miss about leaving China is the cost of living. Uh, you know, the price of food here at restaurants, depending on the restaurant, obviously, is really, really cheap. Um, I don't also don't understand why there's so much traffic today. This is insane. People must be out wanting to drive after that typhoon because the weather's so good. Um, but uh, yeah, so the cost of food is really, really cheap. Um, and it's delicious too. And that's not something you really get in Canada. Uh, going out to eat in Canada is, at least in my opinion, really expensive. Um, you know, especially because, you know, tips are factored in there as well. And then the plus there's taxes. So you maybe you went to a restaurant, you spent 20 bucks, but then, you know, you throw in a couple dollars tip and then tax and all of a sudden, you know, your bill's a lot more expensive than you would have thought. Whereas here in China, there's no tipping. Um, and food, I think I mentioned this in my last video, relatively uh, cost uh, somewhere around 10, 20 RMB, uh, which is pretty sweet, um, depending on the restaurant. Again, like I said, um, and it's not just food, uh, you know, rent compared to other places is really cheap. I know that in Ottawa, I think, I mean, when I left, I don't know what it's like now. Uh, when I left, like the cheapest apartment, like a one bedroom, if you're gonna live there by yourself with no roommates, is gonna cut what was at the time, like about 700, 800 bucks. Uh, whereas here, uh, I don't know what the conversion is, but uh, like I told you guys in my last video, I paid 2000 RMB, uh, bills included. Um, and so I, I don't know what you're looking at there, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than Ottawa. 
That's for sure. And I know I keep comparing it to Ottawa. It's just that's the only place I've ever lived. <laughs> so bear with me. I know that uh, a lot of you guys that are living in uh, Vancouver or California, obviously, I just don't understand how any of you can afford to live there. But uh, number two on my list is uh, the opportunity to meet people from around the world. Now, <clears throat> I understand that... Oh, cool temple. I understand that if you go to Japan or Korea or another country, obviously this is going to apply to you as well. But I just like the fact that because I've traveled to China, I got to meet people not just from China, but there's other foreigners from Colombia and Germany and the UK and, and, and all kinds of different places. And, uh, you know, I think it just kind of opens your mind a little bit more to the world. You're a little less ignorant uh, as to just the world in general, I guess. And it's really awesome because it, it, it doesn't necessarily force you, but naturally, because all of you are foreigners now, um, you put, you, 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 people group up. You know, If you go to bars and stuff, you'll always see the foreigners hanging out, even though they all come from different backgrounds. But the fact that they're foreigners brings them together. And some people might think that's not so great, but I, I think it's kind of cool to be able to uh, talk and interact with people from around the world. Like, and you, this might sound kind of stupid if you've never met like someone from the UK, for example. Like before coming to China, I never had any British friends. And uh, I was always under the assumption that they're relatively similar to C Canadians because we share quite a bit of our culture, just historically. Uh, fuck no. <laughs> British people are way different than, than, than people in North America. Like just like British banter and British humor is something I'm not used to. Um, because I, I think in Canada, we would just brand people as just being a giant dick. <laughs> and it's really hard to explain, but basically if you're sitting around a table full of British people, all they're doing is drinking and, and making fun of each other the whole time. And uh, that took me a long time to get used to. I also don't know where I'm going again. Every video ends up like this. I end up driving on roads like, well, that are non-existent, basically, like this one. Oh, God, I'm taking you guys through some industrial shit today. So, yeah, I mean, British people just, they make fun of each other all the time. And then, so they'll say, like, really mean, cutting things, but everyone's laughing. And that took me a long while to get used to. Um, unless British people actually just don't like me and uh, I'm, I'm taking this the wrong way. But... Anyways, yeah, I think the ability to meet people from around the world is really cool. I've, I've met a lot of friends here that, uh, you know, don't have the same background as me, and I, I dig that. Number one on my list, and this doesn't necessarily have to do with China so much and more have to do with me, is uh, Olivia. Uh, I, know I don't spend a lot of time on camera with her uh, very often, but uh, I've gotten to spend so much time with her uh, since, you know, me and Seamal hang out all the time, and I, I've just... I don't know. I, I, I like that kid, I guess. I don't know how to really explain this in a, in a way that doesn't sound fucking creepy. But, you know, we found out Vivi was pregnant. I was kind of like, well, shit, there you go, you know, because, uh, cause, you know, you guys hear all the old stories about, you know, like in the movies and stuff, someone gets married, someone has a kid, and then they never hang out with their friends anymore just because they don't... Ugh. They don't have the time because they have a family now, you know, and, you know, me and Seamilk were kind of worried because back in the day we used to... Uh, we mentioned this in the live stream, by the way, on Seamilk's channel. If you missed it, then sorry. But... <laughs> You know, we used to go on trips and stuff all together, uh, going to the beach, just driving right around on our motorcycles, just doing dumb shit, hanging out all night, you know, and we obviously understood that that had to come to an end now that he's having a baby. Um, and it did, but when she was finally born, uh, I just fell in love with this kid. She's awesome. And uh, I love getting over, I, I love being able to go over to Seamilk's place and hanging out with her all the time. She's just an awesome kid. And I... It sucks having to leave China and not being able to watch her grow up anymore because I've been with her, you know, for a long while uh, since she's been born. And now that she's kind of going away, it feels kind of weird, you know. But yeah, that's probably the number one thing I'll miss is Olivia. And obviously Seamilk and Vivi as well. But um, fun fact, I'm from Ottawa and he's from uh, Bidmington, New York, which is really, really close to uh, Ottawa. I think it's only like a five hour drive. I don't know. But it's so... It's not going to be that bad, but uh, it's definitely something I'm going to miss, is uh, being able to hang out with Olivia. She's just an awesome kid. Anyways, guys, that's my little list. I'm sure I'll do a follow-up video uh, when I leave China to actually figure out what I did end up missing. Um, and I'm not... This doesn't mean that I'm leaving China immediately. Uh, I did get... Oh, I just got hit by a leaf. I did end up uh, getting an ESL job so I can make some money, which is going to take some time so I can actually hopefully move to Taiwan. And, uh, you know, I, I realize a lot of these things that I miss, uh, Taiwan might also have them as well, but because I've never been to Taiwan, I can't really say anything about that. Speaking of Taiwan, I wanted to give a huge thank you to all of the overwhelming amount of people that messaged me and were helping me out with information and just, uh, 
you know, letting me know about Taiwan and, and you guys have been really helpful. So yeah, you guys have also been really helpful with uh, these tough times, you know, um, things haven't been going that well. And you guys have really been helping me out. I love that, you know, people like Jose, the guy that gave me that camera, who I, I just, oh, just it's ridiculous generosity, generosity I've never actually seen before is, uh, is awesome. And, um, you know, I love seeing the comments uh, people that, you know, are just wishing me well and stuff. It means a lot. And to the haters, you know, recently been getting a lot of those lately. Thanks to the haters, much love. Um, I also wanted to take this time to explain, you know, how I got myself into this situation. I think a lot of people come to the conclusion that I'm just a fucking loser or, you know, I don't know how to take care of myself or X, Y, and Z. I just wanted to clear that up for you guys just to be as clear as possible. It was open and honest as possible anyways. Uh, basically, the school I work for, that international school, they were really struggling financially. I still are. Um, and so they would always pay late or they would pay in... Uh, oh, cool, fishing. They'd always pay in like different installments. So you get like half your paycheck one week and the rest, you know, in a couple of weeks later or something. It was really annoying. But they always paid, right? They would never like withhold pay um, until I stopped working there. And I guess they just didn't really see any reason in, in, in paying me. And so... Uh, they would say things like, okay, you know what, Prozzy, uh, next month you'll get your pay. And I'm like, all right, you know, I'm used to this, whatever. And then the month would come and be like, hey, where's my money? And they'd be like, oh, you know, in a few weeks. And I'm like, oh, I guess. Because back then I had a lot of savings, um, you know, because I, I wanted to go to Japan. Uh, you guys know that from back then. And so I saved up a lot of money because Japan's expensive. And, you know, again, they would give me new dates and new times. And I, I just was living off my savings because I didn't want to go and get a job, um, and sign a year contract and then just have to leave in a few months. Uh, this is not really fair to that company, you know. And so I didn't. I just, uh, I, I just waited it out. And now it's gotten to the point where it's been like three or four months and they still haven't paid me. So now I have to go get some ESL job to hopefully pay the bills, afford rent, uh, sell my bikes to make some money because, you know, I really, really, really don't have that much money anymore and it sucks. Uh, so that's what happened. Anyways, guys, uh, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Much love. Uh, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Stay positive.